Dr. Jim Rice, thanks so much again for joining me here today to talk a little bit more about what's going on in space. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. It's a lot of fun to talk about space. That's my career and it's what I've dreamed about my whole life. So thanks for having me on. So what was your reaction at first when you heard that these two astronauts were going to be stuck in space? I know you said earlier that, you know, stranded is not a good word, but I mean, that's kind of what the headlines are saying. Tell me why that not is not necessarily the case. Well, well stranded um, is not a good word. I know it is being used all over the place. It makes it sound super dramatic and <laughs> clickbait and all those kind of things in the world we live in. But the astronauts are not stranded. Uh, if you look up the word stranded in the dictionary, basically that means you have no means of rescue or a return. And that is totally untrue. The astronauts are not stranded in space. Uh, they're not marooned. They're not left up there. They're actually up there with seven other astronauts on the space station, and they're not alone. Um, and the, the, the thing that is, their capsule or spacecraft that took them up there, the Boeing Starliner, is not going to bring them home, okay? Other than that, they're going to come home on another, on another spacecraft, and it's going to be by SpaceX called the Dragon in February. Now, to be honest, obviously, the crew was the nominal or the normal mission time was only going to be an eight-day duration mission. This was a test flight of this new vehicle, Starliner. And um, they're going to be up there not, not eight days, but a little bit over eight months. Mm -hmm. So that was not in the original plan. But um, the NASA astronauts, these are professionals, okay? They don't just fly up in space on a whim like some of these tourists are doing you hear about today. These people train. This is their career. They live this and they train it. And they prepare years for missions. And um, in doing so, they prepare for all contingencies, like what they're having right now. Um, this was not what it, the nominal, they call nominal mission, but they train for this possibility. And sure enough, that's what's going to happen here. They're going to be up here eight months. But and, it's not a talk, shock to these two Jim, astronauts. Jim, talk about just like what is going on on the ISS, because when you were talking about, you know, they're they're not stranded. I mean, there are other people up there that they are interacting with. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, um, there are seven other astronauts and cosmonauts, Russian cosmonauts up there and ast American astronauts. And day in and day out, they're doing all these um, experiments up there. Uh, you know, how the human body reacts to uh, weight, the weightless environment. Uh, they're doing um, experiments to, you know, Metal, metal, metallurgy, all, you know, astronomy, all kinds of stuff they're doing up there. And they're busy. They're not just floating up there reading <laughs> books. And their day is very, they're very, their day is very oversubscribed. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, they've got now basically two extra crew members up there to help with their uh, duties. And those two crew members that are, um, that went up on the Boeing Starliner, because they're going to be up there eight extra months, have been to the space station before. Uh, SUNY Williams has been there twice before. She has an accumulated time in space of over 600 days. Mm -hmm. And Butch Wilmore has been to the space station once before. And he was up there about 270 days. So these people that are up there, they, they're used to this. They've done this before. And they've been to the space station before. It, um, it sounds, know, yeah, it sounds like they can handle this. Um, what, in your opinion, though, does this do to Boeing? Because, you know, we've covered extensively their problems, you know, with the planes um, you know, kind of the lack of oversight um, at some of the, the places that are producing these planes or fixing them. Um, what does this do to the, to the reputation of Boeing in the space community? Well, there's no doubt it's a black eye. I mean, this is not something you want to happen. Um, you know, Boeing, like you mentioned, they've, they've had a lot, of, uh, a lot of bad luck or, you know, problems in the last several years. And the Starliner is just the latest one and it's very visible um my opinion i th what they're going to do is first week of september they're going to the starliner is going to separate from the space station and come back and land on earth without astronauts mm -hmm. um and they're going to recover it in white sands new mexico and then they'll be able to take it apart get in the laboratory and see exactly what was going wrong with these thruster engines and the leaks of the helium system and, and figure it out exactly and they'll be able to repair it and uh, it's going to fly again i think sometime in the future now when i, I would not hazard to guess because a lot of work needs to be done obviously but i don't think this is the end of starliner i think 
um, it will live to fly another day. And um, but definitely a lot of work has to be done because uh, NASA doesn't have confidence in it to bring the crew members back now. Yeah, NASA definitely wants to protect those too, and for good reason, of course. Dr. Jim Rice, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you.